and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. My name is Daniel Morris, Chief Market Strategist, and today I'm joined by Benoit Bellon, Senior Analyst in our Quantitative Research Group, to talk about the performance of value and growth stocks. Welcome, Benoit. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hi, Daniel. Great to be here. Your title is a quantitative research analyst. So we're going to be looking at growth stocks and value stocks from a quantitative point of view. And nonetheless, when we think about the performance of value and growth over the last decade or so, it hasn't necessarily uh, gone to plan, I think it's safe to say. Most of us were taught uh, in business school or by, by reading our uh, investment books that over the long run, value stocks are supposed to outperform growth stocks. But for pretty long periods, that hasn't been the case to the point that a lot of investors have to a degree, abandoned value investing, and you've had a lot of value mutual funds that have had to shut down simply because they didn't have inflows. So I'm hoping in our discussion today, Benoit, to understand a bit why that's happened and probably more importantly, what's going to happen next. Let's start with valuations then. And I believe if we look at value stocks today, they still seem cheap or relative to growth stocks. Yet at the same time, there's a premium to value. Can you explain why that is? Let's start with the definition of value stocks. Value stocks are stocks that trade at lower prices relative to their fundamental values. For instance, free cash flow or net income. They are cheap, and most of the time, there is no particular reason for this other than that investors simply misprice these stocks. On the other side of the spectrum, you have stocks that trade at higher prices relative to their fundamentals. They are often called glamour stocks because they are in the limelight. Investors are prepared to buy them even if they appear expensive. If you look more closely, uh, you actually find that glamour stocks tend to have higher expected earnings or sales growth. Uh, Most glamour stocks are growth stocks. This is probably why they are mispriced and expensive. Investors seem to overestimate the actual growth these companies can deliver, at least on average. In reality, um, they often grow more slowly than expected, and that is why there is a value premium. The value premium, by definition, is the excess return of value stocks relative to glamour stocks. It measures their relative outperformance. When we think about valuations, and in particular the value premium, how important is it to take sectors into account? Yes, if you want to capture the value premium in an efficient way, then it is better to compare apples with apples and oranges with oranges. In that way, you are more certain that differences in valuations reflect the mispricing of stocks and therefore differences in valuations can offer an investment opportunity. Different sectors of activity can have very different levels of expected growth. That makes most of the valuation metrics used to identify value stocks less relevant for the purpose of identifying mispricing when comparing stocks from different sectors. So, in selecting value stocks, sectors matter. Investors should compare the valuation of stocks within the same sector and avoid comparing the valuation of stocks across sectors. In a recent paper, we have shown that the value premium is significantly larger and much more persistent when we measure the performance of value stocks against the expensive stocks from the same sector. We show that by avoiding sector biases, the value premium arises very naturally from the convergence of the cheap prices of value stocks and the expensive price of growth stocks toward their fundamental values. When you look at it in detail, you understand why sector biases are not good if you want to design a strategy to systematically harvest the value premium efficiently. However, this is not how everyone thinks about value investing. Many investors tend to think of value and growth mainly as sector active bets. But sector returns are impacted by other factors than valuations based on price of stocks relative to free cash flow or net income. The exposure of companies in one given sector to the microeconomic cycle matters much more for the returns of stocks from that sector. And the business cycle may have different impacts on each sector, whether it is more cyclical or defensive. So taking active sector bets based on the average valuation of sectors is exactly the opposite of what you should do if all you want is to capture the premium from buying cheap stocks and selling expensive stocks. Avoiding sector biases and comparing valuations of stocks with valuation of their sector peer leads to the best results. Our research has shown that over and over again. Now, you've argued in your research that there's an opportunity 
in value stocks, as you can see in the value spread. Why then is the value spread so important for investors? Well, the gap between the valuations of value stocks and glamour stocks is known as the value spread. And our research shows that this premium arises naturally from the convergence of cheap stocks and expensive stocks toward their respective, their respective fundamental values. Uh, when prices are converging to fundamentals, value spreads are compressing. So that is why periods of value spread compression favor value stocks. And conversely, periods of value spread expansions are less favorable for value. And that is also why when value spreads are wide, they have more room to compress for longer which is again more favorable for value stocks. As I mentioned in the introduction, many investors have simply given up on the value style and favored growth now for quite a while. In 2021, however, you co-wrote a research paper that argued that we might be at a secular turning point for both styles. Is that still your view? Well, again, this has a lot to do with sectors. If you are a value investor, who accepts sector biases, then most likely you have just experienced a lost decade. That is because sectors with higher growth outperformed sectors with lower growth in the last 10 years. It is not surprising that these investors are worried. But as we have said already, our research shows that the value premium is best captured avoiding sector biases. Yet, from time to time, you can still experience a temporary underperformance of value. This could result from herd behavior and unrealistic growth expectations from glamour stocks in the same sector. But such episodes rarely last more than two years. This was the case in the tech bubble between 1998 and 2000. This was again the case from 2018 through 2020. By the end of 2020, value stocks were extremely cheap relative to their glamour peers in the same sector across all major regions and sectors. In 2021, the sector neutral value style finally started outperforming growth. However, this has so far hardly changed the spread. The value stocks have remained very cheap. With value spread still this large, we continue to expect a rather favorable time for the value style. Today then, how do value spreads look across regions and sectors? All spreads in the US, in Europe, and in the rest of the world peaked in 2021. And they have remained wide despite the high performance of value stocks that I mentioned before. The spread has also remained very large in most sectors. This is the case for the five macro sectors that we defined as cyclicals, energy and industrials, defensive, information technology and financials. And it's also the case for more granular definitions such as the 11 sectors based on the GICS classification. As such, we have not found any significant differences either across regions or across sectors. When we think of the environment currently, how should investors position themselves to get the most out of the current opportunities? Fundamentally, should they be favoring value stocks? If the 2019-2020 period resembles 1998-2000, we can expect a prolonged multi-year period of value spreads narrowing. What we saw in 2021 in all regions and macro sectors has been quite modest so far. Moreover, what was already a favorable backdrop for value investing may even be reinforced by the intention among leading central banks to respond to rising inflation by raising official interest rates. As said, such a scenario is typically unfavorable for growth stocks, which exhibit a higher sensitivity to changes in interest rates. In our view, since value spreads still have a long way to go, the environment remains particularly good for value equity strategies. Saying this, we would warn investors that it is best to capture the value premium using systematic strategies by avoiding sector biases. Sector neutral value strategies should continue to offer a more robust approach to profiting from buying cheap stocks and shedding expensive stocks. Thanks very much, Benoit. If I can summarize a couple of the key points you shared with us. Uh, you highlighted that when we compare value versus growth, we need to be very conscious of the sectors, as some sectors have quite different valuations and earnings growth prospects than others, and we need to take that into account when we define what value is and what growth is. And that's also quite important when you construct a portfolio, because if you don't take the sectors into account, you just end up with a sector allocation as opposed to a style allocation of value and growth. That said, the value spread properly measured, 
you see is still wide today, suggesting that even with the uh, recovery we've had in value over the last year or so, that there's still opportunity in value stocks. And in addition, given that interest rates are rising, uh, that's a factor that also generally favors the value versus the growth style. Well, that's all we have time for today. If you'd like more information, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out our Investors Corner blog. For listeners who have devices with Alexa, you can ask Alexa to enable Investment Insights or search for Investment Insights on Amazon under the category Alexa Skills. My thanks to Benoit for sharing his insights. Thank you, Daniel. It was a pleasure. Please join me next week when I'll be speaking with Chilo about China. Until then, we hope you stay safe and take care. This podcast presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BNP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the publication date.